Hello. It's been a little bit, a couple weeks in fact, and I know you've been dearly worried, but don't worry, I've just been busy. In that time, I've done some traveling, I got sick for like three or four days, I got elbowed in the face, which led to a black eye, I wasn't really presentable on camera, and most importantly, as of today, I am officially 11 months into remission from stage four metastatic melanoma. Man, maybe I am not as camera presentable as I thought. I just went and looked at that first shot, and uh, this is not as healed on camera as it looks in the mirror, but not really the point. Actually, the good point I can make in relation to this is, sure, I listed the most important thing, which is entering into 11 months of remission, but that's more of a static thing. I didn't have to really do anything to achieve that except exist and not get cancer again. But the other three things I listed, the travel, the sickness, and getting elbowed in the face, which by the way, moving screen. If you're the ref who didn't call that, that was a moving screen. But regardless, those three things, those mean that I'm living life. And that is the important thing. And that specific word, living, it is in direct contrast with existing, even though in some capacities they're synonymous. But when you're a cancer patient, you understand what it's like to be reduced to the base of I need to exist. And then you realize how hard it is to get back to what living life actually is. Because living life, it is something that is bound by time. And time is threatened by death. I mean, that's the only reason we do challenging things and feel pain and feel loss. If we had unlimited time and therefore unlimited resources, none of these things would matter. It would be very difficult to motivate ourselves to feel happiness or sadness because all the things that we won or lost or created or were destroyed, we would have infinite time to rebuild them. Cancer, it compresses all those things. So all of a sudden, when you're in the most grim of diagnoses, when you realize that your existence is being threatened, you forget what it's like to live life. You're just trying to hold on. And don't get me wrong, I understand that both living and existing are more literally in contrast with not existing, aka dying, and I've gone into remission from advanced melanoma twice, which 20 years ago or more would have been almost a death sentence. So I know that I'm very fortunate to be here and talking about the growth trajectory back from existence into living. And I also want to acknowledge that there are a lot of cancer patients today that don't get that chance. So it's not as though I'm saying, oh man, it's just not enough to exist because it is significant. But living is where you get the bumps and the bruises and the sickness and the weirdness and the happiness and the triumphs. And if you're lucky enough to get back in the ring after a cancer diagnosis, you would better well take advantage of it, or at least that's how I'm going to look at it. And it's also important for me to show the positivity in my life because I started this vlog the day after my diagnosis. I had no idea how any of this was going to go, and I've documented both the downswings and the upswings, and I hope to continue to. And since cancer has been historically portrayed as something that is just gaunt people, you know, hooked up to an IV dying in a hospital, I think it's really important that there are people who are making content that show the upside as statistically it gets more and more likely that people will be able to live with cancer one way or another. But there is also, of course, a balance in how we talk about survivorship, how we talk about long-term odds, how we talk about outcomes in a cancer diagnosis. Everyone who has cancer, has a friend, family, or loved one who has cancer, is bound by that ubiquity. But our lives and how we respond to it and the luck involved in how we respond to it vary wildly. So I don't want to sit here and just say like, oh, it's getting better for everyone. I know that there are many people who are watching who are suffering and that just sucks. There's no other way to put it. But the hope is that years down the line we have better and better treatment and better and better science so that we don't have to be in this position anymore. All right, now that I have prefaced and buffered the conversation about cancer in general, you guys know I like to do that, we can talk about me, because that's what we're here for, me, the guy who's specifically 11 months into remission from stage four metastatic melanoma. Right now I can confidently say that for the third or fourth month in a row, things are slowing down both mentally and emotionally. I mean that in a good way. And you might be thinking, okay, you're 11 months into remission, why do you only have three or four months of progress? Well. Being a cancer patient requires some skill. Dealing with any component of the disease, whether it's during your diagnosis or treatment or being in remission, requires some level of skill and adaptation. And as I was going through the first six, seven, eight months of remission, I kept tricking myself into thinking I had a cancer scare. And maybe tricking is the wrong word. I mean, there, I still got an inflamed lymph node. It turns out it's just very superficial, so it sits up here and I can feel it. And so it was very justifiable for me to be scared, but I really put myself in kind of a mental hole as I kept focusing on that and maybe less on living and you know trying to make plans because I always want to be optimistic. I always want to forecast the best outcome and then you know I'll change my plans if something bad happens, but I wasn't doing that. And this is a pattern I've noticed in both of my remissions. It's like you're in shock all throughout your treatment. You get out of it, you're still probably in some residual shock, and then you have to reacclimate to the world. And for the most part, that means you're existing at first. Like you're stoked every day when you get up, but the world is happening to you. You're not making dynamic plans, you're not setting goals because one, you're scared of a cancer occurrence. I think that's very normal. Two, you are still in this fight or flight where the only thing you were focusing on is getting through cancer treatment, and now all of a sudden you're re-exposed to what your new normal is, and you have to adapt. You have to learn to set goals. You have to learn to plan again. 
And the activities I referenced at the beginning of this video, they're very representative of me adapting to my new normal and having growth in my life, which is really, really important. So I've talked about this a number of times on this vlog, but since my first diagnosis, I've developed travel anxiety. It was actually something that manifested during my first treatment, and maybe I'll tell that story later. But regardless, it's been difficult for me to travel without really, really worrying about getting outside my shell for about six years. This trip, while sure there was a little bit of anxiety, it was better. I felt myself feeling more and more comfortable with just approaching life in a now setting versus the big picture what if setting. Similarly, when I got sick, it's the same thing. When you're a cancer patient and you get sick, it's always, oh my God, what is this a symptom of? Is this something coming back? Is it related to my cancer, whether it's active or stuff that's residual from treatment? Sickness is not compartmentalized the way it should be as just a, okay, I got a cold and I'm done with it. This time around, I was pretty calm about it. It made me feel good. And then finally, I brought up, you know, getting a black guy playing basketball, and it's not so much that I hadn't been playing basketball, I've been able to do that, fortunately, throughout most of my treatment and recovery, but I'm playing in a league that I have played in for, say, the last 10 years, and this season is the first one in two seasons in which I've been a highly impactful player, and basketball has been such a big part of my life, and I consider myself to be pretty good at it, that, you know, I have a good idea of where I stand in these leagues, and it didn't feel good to be a participant, non-participant, to say, you know, I was just going through the motions and trying to get myself some mental relief by working out, and now I'm back to a mode in which I'm, you know, impacting games, dominating games, people are asking me to be on all these different leagues, and that feels good, that represents progress as well. And finally, I want to reference back to the most important declaration I made at the beginning of the video, which is just 11 months in remission. That is more time in remission than 10 months, it's more time than 6 months, and I hope to make it to 2 years, 5 years, whatever. But the reality is that time is the only thing available that will help you heal emotionally and mentally and physically. Each day you don't have cancer is another day you don't have cancer. I know it's pretty obvious, but the statistics get way better for long-term, you know, durable remission as you get to 1 year, as you get to 18 months, as you get to 2 years. So each one of these that I get to make is kind of a declaration that, hey, my odds are improving. And that is the most important thing. Like I said, that truly gives me a chance to exist and by proxy, a chance to live. So that puts the bow on the last two weeks. I'm 11 months into remission, I'm existing, I'm living, and I'm spending my time well. If you're still watching, I wanna thank you for spending your time well by watching this video. I also wanna thank you if you drop a like on the video or subscribe to my channel. It really helps me broaden these conversations and reach more patients and their loved ones. And until then, I'm gonna have a better update with no black eye next time. Bye.